Hi guys, Jonathan here with, sadly, not a real Robocop Auto 9 pistol. I'll just, I'll, we'll reveal that right away if you hadn't already figured it out. It's not even a movie prop version, which I would dearly love to add to the collection here, um, but would probably be too costly. It is in fact manufactured by KSC of Japan. It's an airsoft gun. Um, it'll kind of cheap and plasticky by modern airsoft standards, but um, it's an awful lot of fun because it's automatic. So what are we really here for? Well, um, you can see, I think, under the disguise, which is essentially what this is, if you know, well, if you know, you know, <laughs> this under here is the Beretta 93R, Model 93R. Now, allegedly, um, the 93 stands for third model in nine millimeter, I, I'm told. Um, there's a very good video over on um, the Firearm Blog TV channel that talks to uh, the designer of the 93R. Definitely, get, definitely check that out, hopefully after you've watched this. <laughs> so under this is the, the M93R. Um, which came with an extended magazine, which this is replicating, 20 round magazine. And well, I'll show you the switches on the, on the real gun in a moment. All they, it, it's, it's, for me, this is second only to the pulse rifle for iconic science fiction guns. Um, yes, the Blade Runner blaster, I know, but, <laughs> and this is, um, so this is kind of what it looks like on the, on the prop. It is uh, lumps of aluminium turned or machined into shape. Um, the, on, the, on the original prop, there's even a, a panel cut out. Um, many thanks to, to Brad over at the Robocop archive for a load of behind the scenes information on, on this prop. But they actually cut a chunk out because it was, it was too heavy, uh, found to be too heavy. So they just machined a load of metal out and put a plate over the, over the, the bottom of it. This shape is supposed to resemble a coffin, according to the behind the scenes information. I'm not sure it really does, but it definitely looks um, very cool and unusual. It was made to be reversible. So as you'll see on the real gun, the, the front sight of the, of the 93R is still there. It isn't on this sort of idealized airsoft version. And it's, it clamps on where the folding foregrip goes. And at that point, I may as well <laughs> reveal the real gun. So here it is, let's close the slide. You can see the lines, of course, and that great big muzzle extension is, is clamped on at the pivot point of the folding foregrip, which we'll come back to in a moment. A specially made plastic grip that wraps around and, ex and well, kind of covers the extended base plate on the real mag. So the actual gun has this, this one's broken, unfortunately. Um, the, the little clip that stops it from sliding around is broken. Um, you can actually see, I think, on the real movie prop, the metal body of the mag sticking out the bottom, the very bottom of the gun. I think I'm right in saying that. Um, on the actual gun, there's this piece of plastic that's supposed to meld with the grip and well you don't need any more purchase on a 93 or a 92 which is what this is based on of course but it still has additional sort of fake grasping grooves on the front the other modification made this was all done by randy moore by the way the the prop master or the armorer on uh, the first two robocop movies the other change was this great big site housing now that's actually required because of the the big vented rib style of the of the muzzle extension, you needed to raise the rear sight up. And the way they did that was to just put in a housing into which a sight is fitted. So it just, it, it gives it part of its iconic look, but it's really there to give you the proper sight line for the elevated um, sights. Inside, it gets quite interesting for, for movie prop history because the barrel is not a specially made long barrel. It's actually two pieces. So it's a, well, it's the original barrel threaded for blank because you have to do that 
but then threaded into that is a barrel extension. Now, obviously, that for a real gun, that doesn't work because the two tubes are not lined up correctly. They've got to be rifled. So to actually make this a real firing gun, and somebody has done this with a 92 I've seen on YouTube, um, you would need a specially made barrel or you would need um, to do it a different way. But the way they did it in the movie was to literally thread in a tube that is then screwed to this muzzle extension, meaning that the barrel doesn't reciprocate which on the real gun it does uh, and even on the airsoft gun it's slight it recip does reciprocate as well because it still unlocks like the real gun does doesn't do that on the prop the prop is bl straight blowback blank firing they don't have to worry about the barrel moving at all so it can afford to be clamped to this muzzle extension so really quite an elegant, uh, well, an elegant design done uh, by, I think, Randy Moore with the producer and the director um, to get the look that they wanted out of this big macho looking gun. It was supposed to be a Desert Eagle originally. And I think you can sort of see the, you know, big, long, square shaped gunness of it. Um, but when they, they test, they did test shoots with the Desert Eagle and it looked really short and stubby in Robocop's big robot hand, rubber glove. And also he couldn't get his finger in the trigger guard very easily because the trigger guard on the Desert Eagle is very small because it's a single action trigger mechanism. Now the 93R, as we'll see in a moment, is also a single action trigger mechanism, but it has this great big trigger guard, meaning that Robo has no problem getting his finger into the trigger guard. Why is it there in reality? Let's pivot to the real gun and cover that. So, to the real firearm, and this is one of our collaborations with the, not really game, I don't think it's a game, app, World of Guns, Gun Disassembly, uh, which I've used a number of times over the years, uh, not least, to work out how the heck this thing works. So please do check out that app. Um, <laughs> as I've said in the other collaborations, honestly, it's, it's easier to just play with the with the app than it is for me to explain stuff to you. So this is almost becoming a challenge series where I try to do a better job than a piece of software that's dedicated for the purpose. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just give you an overview though. We've already mentioned the folding foregrip and I mentioned the elongated trigger guard. That wasn't designed for a cyborg policeman. It was designed for your thumb. This is how you are supposed to hold this thing with the shoulder stock attached a bit like a P90, where your thumb and your finger are in the same hole. It gives you enough clearance for your index finger to do the firing and your thumb to hang on for dear life to this thing that is uh, rattling it away at about 1100 rounds per minute. Or so, so Beretta claim, other people say it runs a little slower than that. Um, I have been lucky enough to fire one of these. Uh, I'm afraid I wasn't calculating what the rate of fire was. I was hanging on for grim death. Now, you don't have to hang on as tight, perhaps, as other fully automatic pistols or machine pistols, whatever you'd like to call them, because this thing is three round burst, as you will mostly see in Robocop. Well, you don't see any semi-automatic fire, but that's the semi-automatic position for the selector here. And down is three, three white dots for three round burst. And that's mostly, I think, what we see in the movies, except that sometimes we don't. And that's because the ratchet mechanism, I'll show you in here in a, in a moment, um, uh, Randy Moore came up with two additional ratchet components, one that had uh, teeth for seven round bursts, so you can get a nice long burst, but it still stops at a predetermined point, and one that was just full auto. So you just, you're essentially bypassing the ratchet system and it will just burn through ammo till you take your finger off the trigger, good luck, or it runs out of ammunition. So that way they could set up for whichever scene they wanted to film and have the right number of shots. But the actual 93R, as actually designed and in theory used, although its usage has been minimal, was three round burst, which makes it far more controllable, as does the foregrip with the thumb thing, as does the butt stock. You know, if you're ever going to have an automatic, fully automatic pistol, technically burst, then burst is the way to do it, quite frankly. You can keep all three of those shots on target. Otherwise, even if you just do away with this, I can show you how that comes off. So there's a sliding catch here. We have to pull back. It then latches in the rearward position, allowing you to just drop the stock off like that. So you can see how that attaches. There's a, a, a pin there or a peg. Slides into the hole. 
that looks like a lanyard hole, but it isn't. There's a locator pin at the front to secure it that drops in. And then you have to be sure to pull back on this catch and then latch in the securing latch and then let go. And then it's really, really sturdy. So much better than, for example, the Mauser broom handle with its wobbly buttstock. Just to demonstrate an extra feature of the stock, unlatch, pull off, pull back on the second latch and fold. And you have an extremely convenient, almost pocket size, one might say, or maybe a special shoulder holster rig for your buttstock. So we'll set that aside. So even without that, this, is, this thing is gonna be questionable to control because you've suddenly got no support back here and it's gonna be bucking as it fires. If you then did away with the foregrip as well, well then you're in Glock 18 territory and you're just having to pull down and twist to keep that muzzle down. It does have compensator ports on, the, on this extended barrel. So they are, they are not angled as a brake chamber would be. They are purely on the upper portion of the barrel to help drive that muzzle down against the recoil of a high rate three round burst. And that's the loose configuration, of course, that the pistol was adapted um, or, or the form in which it was adapted to the Robocop movies, where it's just handheld and then it has that huge weight. Well, not really a weight per se, but that huge attachment on the front that really changes the look of the thing quite drastically. A feature of the selector, or rather the safety, let's talk about the safety. The two are pivoted on the same pin, meaning that whether it's in semi or three round burst, you can always engage that safety. Well, when it's cocked, you can. So that's on safe, not firing, and you can happily walk around with it on semi like a normal pistol, or you can have it ready to go on three round burst, and you don't have to change the selector and the safety. You just have to pop off the safety and you're ready to shoot. And that then gives us one, two, the hammer has followed, three, the hammer's followed the um, slide again, and then it will stay to the rear for that third shot. I'm still holding the trigger. Let go of the trigger to reset and it's ready for another three round burst. That bit is simple. Where it gets complicated and where you might need world of guns is to understand what mechanically is happening inside here. So we'll quickly pop, the, pop this grip off and show you. Okay, so loosen the screws on this grip. We'll just take that off and you can see that it is thicker than, it, than a normal 92 series grip and it is relieved there to fit the mechanism underneath. So you kind of do need big cyborg hands to, to uh, wield this thing. And what's under it is this nonsense. <laughs> so there's a built up shelf here with all sorts of levers, springs, and the most important thing to, to look at and remember is this bar here. Hopefully you can see the little teeth on the bar. So one, well, you have to think of it as shelves really, or, or ledges. So one, two, three, and then mirrored below it, one, two, three. Why the six? Well, it's to do with how it all interacts. Um, so we'll try and show you on the real thing. So we have this, this hook here and the teeth of the ratchet here, and it starts where you see it now, on the bottom of the three. We pull the trigger, gun goes bang, nothing happens here yet. As the slide comes back, it then moves the ratchet down one to the next tooth. Slide goes forward, gun goes bang again, and as the slide comes back for the third shot, the hook has moved up or the tooth has gone down, whichever from your, depending on your, on your perspective, goes forward again and now it's caught with, in the cocked position. So the ratchet has, has hit all three points, one, two, three, and then when I release the trigger, it disconnects, ready to start again. Now something, something interesting happened there while I was attempting to demonstrate. 
without the grip on to hold all of this stuff in place, it's possible for the ratchet to pop over or, or to essentially become out of alignment and stick down such that it was only doing a two round burst. So it's a little bit of a finicky thing. It's a hell of a technical achievement to fit all of this under a grip panel to turn a what was formerly a semi-automatic design, the Beretta 92, into a three round burst ratchet mechanism. Absolutely incredible piece of work by Paolo Parola, who is the, the chap that I mentioned in the, in the TFB TV video. But it does have a downside in terms of potential reliability concerns, shall we say. But I don't know that these have had enough hard use to, well, probably the hardest use they've had is in the Robocop movies. Um, so you'd have to speak to the, the armorer there, I think. Uh, there's another aspect to this. Again, so much better on the, on the app, but there's a cutout on the bottom of the slide. And that's what this is for. This, this piece here is pivoted. See me moving it with my finger there. It has a humped feature just about seeing the gap there that engages with a curved feature on the underside of the slide and that's to do with it uh, as it comes forward there has to be something for that to rise up into on the bottom of the slide to allow everything to to move up so you, they've had to make some significant changes to the design but it is recognizably 92 series in its basic design so designed in 1977 um allegedly to a uh, Texas Police Department requirement, which is quite a fun connection to Robocop in a weird sort of way, wrong part of the US obviously, but um, that it came from a US police requirement apparently, developed in, in 1977. Um, I don't know when it came out of production, but I think it was from the mid 90s. Um, I would think that was probably the, well I wouldn't like to speculate, but probably out of production by the turn of the millennium used apparently or at least uh, purchased by the italian carabinieri uh, special units of the, the italian police or um, police under military juris jurisdiction i would assume for close protection work because it does have that potential if you, you can have this in a shoulder holster ready to go three round burst not worrying too much about accuracy for that role necessarily but then if you had to fight you could unfold your buttstock and clip that on under cover or whatever or you know some sort of imaginary scenario and deliver some relatively accurate fire from it and it's 20 round magazine you could even flip it to semi-auto for, for more accurate fire so it's a great answer to the question can i have a fully automatic pistol but that's not the question that you ought to be asking almost nobody needs a fully automatic pistol except of course for detroit police officers. Thanks for watching guys, do remember to like and subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff, but also check out our website, um, it has recently been revamped, so see what you can find on there, including details of our new temporary exhibition, which is opening next month, so do keep an eye out for that. So that's going to be a selection of especially decorated firearms, so everything from um, very beautiful flintlock arms uh, through to a gold-plated Kalashnikov from, you can possibly guess where that's from. So in other words, cross period, uh, it's, but it's all about the guns. So if you're enjoying this series, you're definitely going to enjoy that exhibition. So do come and check that out. As I say, check the website for details on that as we get nearer to the time. But again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.